Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This is your weekly horoscope. It's really nice to be with you today. It's an absolutely glorious day here in England. It's a beautiful, cold, sunny October day. So I'm bringing you this report with lots of sunshine and light all around me here in my living room. And this is a weekly horoscope. Same as I always do it, I look at what relationships the planets form with each other in the sky and how that's going to impact us. And these weekly horoscopes are based on British summer time. So that's UK time. If you're in America or Australia or Japan, just take that into account. And this is going to be one of the last few weekly horoscopes that's based on British summer time because the clocks are going back or forward at the end of October and things become Greenwich Mean Time again. So just be aware of that. Now, I've had a look at the week and it's a week of two halves. Monday through until Thursday, the week is very much influenced by Neptune, the planet of dreams and intuition and feeling. And then from Friday to Sunday, it's very much about Aries and Uranus, chaos, fire, energy, drive. So Monday, the 10th of October, we've got the moon going into Aquarius at 6.34 a.m. And um, the moon also then trines Mercury and Jupiter in Libra. So this is a super fabulous light and breezy start to the week. Conversations, appointments, they all go very well. If you're sitting around chatting to people, you're going to have a laugh. It's going to be fun. It's going to be light. And it's a real feeling of just nice kind of surface level, socializing, having fun and not going too deep. So this is a great day to plan things with other people, to plan meetings, appointments, anything where you're around other people and you don't want to delve too deeply and you just want to have a good time. It's a fabulous start to the week in that sense. Tuesday continues in this vein. It's still great for conversation, but now there's a bit of an added emotional depth, especially when you look at that depth when it comes to romance. So again, it's another great day to just go out and have fun and to do something, you know, light and breezy and enjoyable, but also to do that now with a romantic partner because you can just do all of those fun things you, you know, couples do. PDAs and just having fun and um, spending a nice day. And the reason for this is Mercury, the planet of communication, that is in Libra. So everything is light and very um, harmonious and eloquent and articulate and things are very um, well presented and palatable. And Mercury, the communication planet, it conjuncts Jupiter, which is the planet of good luck and good fortune, and that is also in Libra. So you activate this good luck whenever you come into contact with another person. Things just lighten up, become very positive, and things go along nicely. The sun is in Libra. It um, connects with the moon, which squares Venus in Scorpio. And then finally, we've got Mars in Capricorn, sextiling Neptune in Pisces. So that's where the, um, the additional romantic kind of thing comes from. Venus is very intense, but coupled with the lighter energies of Mercury and Jupiter, that intensity is kind of coupled with lightness and fun and good times. Now, Wednesday, happy Yom Kippur to everyone who celebrates. On Wednesday, we have the moon going into Pisces at 12.44. So we've got the moon now going from this nice air sign of Aquarius into water. So there's more emotional depth now. And the moon also conjuncts Neptune in Pisces, the water planet in a water sign, which then quincuxes Jupiter and Mercury in Libra. So the ability to articulate and to uh, speak and to communicate is very, very good and continues to be very good. But now, Monday, think about your emotions and the level of lightness being up here. Tuesday, we went down there. We became a little bit more emotional, more intense, especially when it came comes to romance. And now on Wednesday, we're very emotional. We're very creative. We're very intuitive. This is really a wonderful day to articulate your own hopes and dreams. And to speak to someone about your feelings and what you see for the future and what you would like to happen. It's the kind of day where you could write a poem if you're that way inclined because you really have access to the emotional side of things and you can delve into that and really explore the emotional side and you feel comfortable doing it. You know, some people are very ill at ease when it comes to getting in touch with their feelings because sometimes in childhood they were told that feelings of weakness and you can't go around crying all the time. This is a day even for people who are closed off to their own emotions to really be able to connect and to get a great sense of what is it that I'm actually feeling. 
And that's really important, you know, if you're doing something, if you're working on something, if you're in relationships and you have no idea what your feelings are, then you can't really make decisions. You don't really know whether things are good or bad. So this is a great day to connect with how you really feel. Now on Thursday, this is a fabulous day for artistic activities, meditation and connecting with others and others being both in this reality here on planet Earth and in other dimensions and other realities. The moon is now in Pisces at its most watery, at its most spiritual and intuitive, and it can it conjuncts Neptune. So it's sitting right on top of Neptune. Neptune really playing a big role here this week, the water planet of intuition and feelings. And this water planet then quincuxes Mercury in Libra, the communication planet, okay? So feelings, intuition, the unmanifest connects via this uh, Mercury link and there's like it's like the radio is on you're getting the signal through and you're hearing the message really great day to engage in all of those artistic kind of activities and anything to do with um, connection and this is the last day of the week that is kind of governed by these intuitive uh, communicative themes because now we go through until Friday the 14th of October and the moon goes into Aries at 3 or 9 in the afternoon. And this is totally different now. So Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, very much about finishing things off and connecting with other realms. Aries is like, according to astrology, the first sign of the new year, because the Western astrology is based on the seasons, and it's all systems go, it's hitting the ground running, and it's moving forward. So this is a very powerful, action-focused day. The self and the ego and desire is going to break through. And the question is going to be, what is it that I want for myself? So enough dreaming, enough painting, enough poems. What can I actually do and achieve and how can I assert myself? That moon is in Aries, but also the moon in Aries opposes Jupiter in Libra. So there's a disconnect between other people and likeness and the personal desire to act and to do things for the self. And the energy may feel chaotic and competitive and uncertain and that leads us into Saturday the 15th of October because Uranus the planet of rebellion and being a maverick and doing things differently that makes its once in a year opposition to the sun in Libra so Uranus is at its closest to planet earth and remember Uranus rules first of all Uranus is a very odd planet it's path through the sky is all over the place. Most of them have like a circle or, in, or um, some sort of predictable movement. Uranus is up and down and all over the place. And it really represents things being unpredictable and all over the place and really being a rebel and doing things uniquely and completely outside of the norm. When I look at uh, someone's birth chart and I look at Uranus, I always know that that person does things differently. So for instance, if someone has Uranus in the seventh house of relationship, I know that that person does relationships differently. Either they need real drama and excitement, or they have a same-sex preference, or they just go through boyfriends or girlfriends like, you know, breakfasts or whatever. And it is a very great indicator of what that person does uniquely. If it's in the 10th house, for instance, in someone's birth chart, I know that there's something about that person's career and the amount of energy they put into their career that marks them out as being different. Okay, So now Uranus is close to us, so we're all going to feel that sense of chaos and energy and feeling like, what am I going to do for myself and how can I compete and how can I beat out the other person and how can I do things myself? Um, and also when Uranus is this close to us, obviously we're affected by that in lots of different ways. So one, we'll all have a greater sense of personal freedom. What do I want to do for myself? There are also going to be real breakthroughs of discovery in science and technology because Uranus also rules those kinds of things. And also because the mavericks, the, you know, the mad scientists are really empowered on this day and they're all having their breakthrough moments and they're really focusing on their work in their own unique way. Now, those are all the plus points. On the downside of things, some people may feel a little bit ill at ease with this chaos and the sense of things being restructured and they might get into arguments or um, 
cut off barriers or relationships. So watch out for that because people are very focused on doing things their way. And if you get in the way of that and say, well, no, that's incorrect, then they're going to rebel. That's what Uranus is all about. Now, finally, on Sunday, the 16th of October, we have the full moon in Aries. That happens at 4.24 a.m. And Aries is a fire sign. So the full moon is when the moon showers us with its beautiful energy. In Aries, it's all about action, action, action. Not only that, this full moon is sitting right on top of Uranus. So it's action in your own unique, rebellious, chaotic, out of nowhere kind of energy. And it's... Um, very close to the earth so it may appear bigger it may appear to be a super moon and it really drives you and kind of forces you to act on things that you care about so as you can see you know the beginning of the week was very reflective and very light and fluffy and now here at the end it's all about drive my desires what can I do this is called the hunter's moon in the year this full moon and the moon then goes into Taurus at five minutes past three in the afternoon and things start to get a bit more stable going into the next week and really being practical and grounded so it's these three day three days Friday Saturday and Sunday where really you're at the peak of your powers it's all drive 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 how can I make things happen and how can I do them in my own unique unconventional way so that's what I get for the week. I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. I hope you have a great week. This is really a fab week of being able to um, you know, connect with the intuition and the spiritual side of things. Um, so the thing that I've been interested in lately is channeling and connecting with certain entities to get information through rather than connecting with my own higher self. So the first four days of the week will be really good for that kind of activity. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is about breaking barriers, overcoming obstacles and asserting in yourself, asserting yourself in a way that feels very real and honest to who you are and taking action and moving things forward. So I hope you have a great week. If you would like a private reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab and you can order your reading with me there. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and I will be with you for the daily tarot readings, the weekly horoscopes and the monthly horoscopes. The ones for October are out for each sign of the zodiac. I'm going to do the uh, monthlies for November in the next week or two. So watch, watch out for those. I hope you have a great week and I'll speak to you soon.